What's up YouTube, it's your boy Michael, and in this video, we're gonna be talking about SEO on Next.js. Now, before I get into the video, I just wanna say thank you very much for the love, the subscriptions, the like, the comments of the last video absolutely blew me away. I did not think this video was gonna get this many views. And thank you for all the love, the comments, means the world to me. I appreciate all the support. But without further ado, let's get into the video. So we're gonna be talking about how you do programmatic SEO on your Next.js applications. Now, I'm building a blog for my wife. Uh, she runs a foodie Instagram. Uh, hey Toronto Foodie and I'm building her a blog so she can rank uh, her content and get some uh, viewers when people are searching for food spots right so fairly simple uh, just working on a simple layout uh, built a custom CMS using Superbase, so I'm not using sanity or anything like that um, I built my church's website using sanity I, I'm, I'm kind of gearing towards building my own custom CMS from now on when I do blogs so that's what I have going on right here and what we're essentially going to do is we're going to follow the Next.js docs and build the SEO for this site together. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. So I already have my project set up. Um, step one, let's go back to Excalibur, our trusted notes. We're going to do the sitemap. We're going to set up the sitemap. Tells us here, sitemap.xml.jsts is a special file that matches the sitemap XML format to help search engine crawlers index your site more efficiently so that's what it is now this is how you're supposed to do it traditionally but next.js has their own way of doing it, so that's what we're going to follow so, so let's do it the next.js way so i have some notes here so what we're going to do is we're going to first export default async function sitemap right and then as you can see here on this code when you see this return array right here it's an array of objects with the URL, last modified, change frequency and priority. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep it simple. I'm going to return an array, but I'm just going to contain the URL, which in this case is HTTPS forward slash forward slash www dot. Actually don't do the www, I don't think. Hey Toronto foodie dot com. So this is the home page. And then we're going to do last modified because I believe this is important. Last modified. And then we're just going to do new date. Right. So this just indexes your main page, your home page. And again, this is what Next.js is going to output for us. So it's going to output the URL and then the last modified is going to be there. I don't need change frequency and priority. So I'm just going to skip over that. But you can read the docs and, you know, see if you need that for your specific use case. Now, one thing you have to realize is I just don't have this URL. So if I go on the website, uh, I have the main page. Well, this is the blog page. I have the main page. And then if I click on a blog, I also have blog posts. So slash blog. And then you can see the slug here, Detroit style pizza, Toronto. So based on this strategy this the system i just learned that means i'm going to have to for every blog post create a url type in the url all that type of stuff right but i don't have to do that with Next.js because we're programmers and we're going to do that programmatically so this is how you do it programmatically uh, on Next.js. so what i'm going to do is i'm going to fetch all my blog posts so i have a function called get articles and get articles basically gets all the articles i have and then what I'm going to do just to clean things up is I'm going to do const base URL and just make this the base URL. All right. And then I'm just going to assign this to base URL. So just make it nice and cleaner. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do const response await get all articles. All right. Perfect. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do const blog posts because I want to extract all the blog posts from this response. And then I'm going to map over the results. And this is what I'm going to return. I'm going to return this object right here. So I'm going to return URL, which is going to be post. No, sorry. It's going to be, uh, let me see here. I'm going to do that base URL. And then I'm going to do slash blog slash post dot slug so this is how i have it set up in my db i'm being a bad boy right now but i'll just do the any type 
please you know do your types properly but i'm just i'm just feeling like a g right now and i'll do last modified to be posts.created at so i essentially just created an array of these objects so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this blog post and then i'm just going to spread it here so now not only am i uh getting my main page but i'm also getting each individual blog post url and let's say i add a blog post to my cms to my db it will capture it here so why don't we just check this out so let's do yarn dev we have our local host here let's just make sure it works now let's do forward slash sitemap.xml and you see oh oops let me do that again sitemap.xml you see the main page the home page and then you also see the blog post and just to show you this works if i if i comment this out and i refresh there you go so we have programmatically just set up our sitemap so that is step number one on our trusted Excalibur. so we're going to remove that step number two is setting up our robot.txt file so again nextjs has a way of doing this so when we look at the docs it says add or generate a robots.txt file to match the robot inclusion exclusion standard in robot in the robot in the root of app directory to tell search engine crawlers which urls they can access on their site so you can just copy this and this is kind of how it's done but again nextjs has a way of doing it programmatically so what we're going to do is we're going to go to this page i'll just remove this here and i'm going to import metadata route from next and then we're going to do export default function we're going to do robots and then there's a type here it's metadata route dot robots and then all we're going to do is we're going to return rules and then rules is an object and in this object we're going to have user agent and i'm going to do asterisk i'll explain what that is and there's the allow array which i will just do the home page for now and then this allow this allow i will just leave empty for now and then at the end you're going to add the sitemap which again will be i'll just copy this base url and then i'm going to do base url slash sitemap dot xml so this is perfect now you might be wondering why i did user agent asterisk basically the user agents are the different uh search engine indexing bots i guess so crawling bots so you have google you have apple you have bing and doing asterisk is basically saying okay to all of them so i don't see why you would have to specify maybe you do but i don't um and then in this array i'm just going to add blog blog so it's going to crawl um on the slash and slash blog as well that's how you set up your robot.ts file so we're zooming through these so robot.ts file is done now we're going to work on static metadata now stat there's there's two different types of uh there's two ways to set up your metadata for each individual page there's uh the static way and the dynamic way so the static way is for like pages that won't really change that are not dynamic for example your home page and then you have dynamic data which are like your blog posts so for example on twitter you see when someone posts a link you're going to see uh the image uh you're going to see an image and you're you, you're going to see a title now this is essentially metadata that you programmatically write on your Next.js page, but there's two ways of going about it. I'm assuming this is a blog post, right? So this was dynamically done. As in, if you were to do this statically, every single page you would have to write the metadata again and again and again. But on Next.js, there's a way to do it statically. So you would do that for pages that don't change, like your home page, maybe. And then you do it dynamically for like blog posts and stuff like that. So we're going to do the static first. I'm going to do this in my layout because I want this for every page that doesn't have um, that isn't like dynamic or doesn't have dynamic metadata. I just want this default one to show. 
right? So if someone links my home page, this is what's going to show. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to do export const metadata, metadata slash dot dot metadata. That's the type. And then we're going to do metadata base. So this is going to be our base URL. So we're going to do new URL. And then I'm just going to copy this URL right here. So we know that this is the base URL. And then we're going to do keywords. So keywords are essentially um, words you want to rank for on Google, right? So this is more of an SEO thing. Um, you should check out uh, a project I'm working on called Rank Boost. I'll link the stuff in in the description. That's sort of what um, I've been working on, an SEO platform to help anyone really uh, programmatically build uh, successful uh, SEO pages so you can rank for whatever product or service you're selling. You should check that out. But for my wife's website, I'm just going to do, I'm just going to copy paste the ones I have here. So you can put them in an array and in the title. So title is essentially what you want to show here, right? So on the UR, like on the tab, essentially. So let's go back to metadata file. Is it this one or yeah, right here. So we're going to do title and then we're going to do default. Hey, Toronto foodie. And then we're going to do template. We're going to do that percent S. Hey, Toronto foodie. Now, what this percent S does is when you start to programmatically dynamically assign metadata and you assign names, uh, for each specific blog post at the end of each title, it would add that dash and hey, Toronto foodie. It just looks nice. And then we're going to do open graph. And this is going to we're going to add the description here. So the description of your website. Again, I just wrote something simple. I'll probably have to get clearance from my wife to make sure this is the official one. And then images. So images are essentially what shows up when someone links your page. So like, for example, this image right here, right? So that's, you could put like a CDN link here to an image you want to show. Um, I don't have an image right now, but just wanted to let you know that that exists here. So we're going to save this. And then if I run this right here, localhost 3000, and then I just do, oops, refresh. I right click and do view page source. And I just search description. You can see the description here for for foodies by foodies. It's the same description here. So that means our static metadata has worked. So so far we're good. We've done static metadata. Now we're going to do the dynamic metadata for the blog post. So I'm going to show you how I have my blog post here. I have a blog folder, and then I have the blog page, and then I have slug. And this basically renders each individual blog post. I'm going to remove this code here and we're going to write it together. So the way we do dynamic uh, metadata, and again, the I'll have all the docs linked down below. You just have to scroll down and see how you do dynamic metadata here. But I'm just going to show you the code because uh, that's what you're here for. So we're going to do export async function generate metadata and then we're going to do we're going to have a prop params and params has a slug which is a type string perfect and we're going to get in there so we're going to do a little try catch action and then we're going to do const response equals await get all articles by slug. So I have a get all articles by slug. And then we're just going to do params.slug. Params.slug. And then we're going to do if response length equals to zero, because I'm going to return an array. If the length is zero, we're going to return title not found and then description i'm just going to copy paste this here the page you're looking for so if someone goes on the long, wrong slug this is what's going to this is the uh, metadata that's going to show 
but if they do land on the right page we're going to return open graph we're going to return an object and in that object is going to be open graph and open graph is an object itself title we're going to do response response dot zero dot title we're going to do description i'll just copy paste these here because you probably have your block set up differently so this is what we're going to return and if it if there is an error i'm just going to console.error the error and return that so this is how you generate uh dynamic metadata so every single blog post uh, in my database, I have title, I have description, I have images, I can add keywords. Again, I would add that in my CMS and they would render dynamically for each single page. I've also seen in the docs, they tell you to do, they tell you to add this function. So there's a function called export async uh, function generate static params. And essentially what this does is this... Uh, you basically fetch all the slugs to all the blog posts you have ahead of time, just so it can, uh, I believe, fetch the metadata without having to do a whole refetch again. I'm not too sure, but I read that it was good practice. So we're going to do that now. So let's set up our try catch. And we're going to do something similar here. We're going to do const response. I have an API. Um, yeah, so I have an API that's going to give me all the list of articles. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do if response dot okay, if not, if it's not okay, if it's in trouble, then I'm going to throw an error saying the fetch failed. But if it's all good, we're going to do const result await response dot JSON. Essentially, what I'm doing is I'm trying to get a list of all the slugs. And then I'm just going to copy paste here and show you the code. So what I'm doing is I'm checking if the result is an array and then if the length is zero, then return an empty array. If it's not, I'm going to map over the result and just return um, an object of slug, like an object of a key value pair with slug. So basically an array of objects that contain slug, I'm going to return that. And if this fails, if it catches an error, I'm just going to console log the error and then return an empty array. Essentially what this does is this returns a list of all the slugs and it makes generating the metadata uh, much faster, have a less fetch. I'm not too sure entirely, but that's pretty much it. So we did the last part, dynamic uh, metadata setup. So to go over what we just did is we set up the sitemap, we set up the robots file, we set up static metadata. So this is for individual pages. And then we set up dynamic metadata for blog posts. Now there's a lot you could do with the Next.js uh, metadata API. So I'm gonna link those docs in the description below. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And again, thank you so much for all the love and support. Make sure to join our Discord. Uh, we're building a great community there. Again, thank you all for the support so much. I hope to see you again, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.